Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show and we're just keep keep rolling with the one wine per show uh, theme for the next uh, few more episodes till we hit episode 300. No, we're not doing Sparta. Gerard Butler is not going to be here. I don't know, I tweeted about it. Maybe he'll show up. Anyway, um, uh, I think I used the hashtag we are wine. Yeah, I know. Stupid and corny and hokey, but that's who I am, so get over it. All right, anyway, um, next wine. The next wine. Uh, this is the 2012 Behringer Founders Estate Cabernet Sauvignon from California, purchased at HEV, the local major supermarket in San Antonio, um, outside of things like Walmart and Target, pretty much the only super, well, no, yeah, well, you know, that world market, you don't really get too many groceries there, but Whole Foods is here. But, you know, as far as like lots of neighborhood grocery stores, it's like the only neighborhood grocery store in town. Uh, we don't have any Kroger's or uh, see what other national chains are there, Safeway or um, A&P, Albertsons. Are they Albertsons still around? I don't know. Anyway, we don't have any of those. Uh, what was the one in St. Louis I heard about? Uh, Wegmans or something like that? Anyway, so uh, bought it at HEB for uh, Behringer. Uh, it normally sells for $647 at HEB. Bought it for $582 because they have their, you buy six wines, you get a 10% discount. And uh, Behringer, I mean, Behringer again, no one of those iconic and um, uh, old wineries in California. Uh, it was one of the first wineries in Napa Valley. It is the oldest continuously operating winery in Napa Valley. So during Prohibition, it was still producing wine. Um, let's see, this is again from the website. Uh, Behringer Founders Estate Wines combine the leg legacy of Behringer quality with everyday value. Founders Estate Wines are meant to be enjoyed immediately and they display a delicate balance of fruit and acidity. Okay. Um, you know, it was a six dollar bottle of wine. And again, I randomly picked it. The random number generator told me what bottle number to get. And I was like, okay, that would be row of this and bam, boom. And this is what it was. So I'm actually excited about doing that more often. It's just when I go into, especially like a grocery store and um, I, I really, you know, it's just kind of like, well, you know, what, what to get. Cause sometimes I would like, if I was looking at the bottles, I probably would not have bought this because it is Behringer. And it's not because Behringer is a bad label, it's because Behringer is a very well-known label. So I would have, you know, picked, you know, like that Chevriot for the Chardonnay. That one I would have been like, okay, never heard of it, let's have that one. So that's usually how I buy the wines for the show and also for personal consumption rather than tried and true uh, well-known brands which does hurt me in a way because that means I'm not familiar with these brands as familiar as some other people are. All right, so Behringer, another cab. So we've had today, uh, tonight, two cabs, a Sangiovese and a Chardonnay. I kind of like this nose better than the other cab. That would be the previous show. Now this is brighter red fruits. You know, I really get, you know, a, a good raspberry out of it. But no pyrazine, it's not yet, at least not on the nose. Sometimes it doesn't show on the nose, sometimes it's on the palate. I don't really get any other, I mean, I get a little bit of, you know, it, it, I get almost 
and sometimes it maybe it's just me and how I describe it, and maybe it's described some some other way. But I get kind of that uh, candied or that candy coating, like a hard candy coating, like sensation. I want to say it's an aroma, but it's that you know that hard candy. You know, there's something about it when you smell when you smell it, um, or when you have it in your mouth, and of course the aroma is going up into your nose. There's a certain quality to that coating, I guess, that's on hard candy. So it's kind of like that. And, and a long, long time ago, and I live in Chicago, and I've mentioned this, I mentioned this a, early on in the show. Um, and there was this raspberry wine that from Korea or something like that, that a buddy of mine in Chicago got me. And, um, you know, it's sweet, definitely sweet. It was very candy-fied, like, like confectionery, like hard candy. And so when I get that, it reminds me of that wine more than, you know, I've never really had, I can think of like a, like a hard candy that's raspberry, but you know, it was that, that kind of sensation. You know, Chambord-like. Well, it's not a sweet wine, but I really feel that raspberry flavor is coming through a lot. Um, I think your average person would call it a sweet wine. It's probably not technically sweet because um, it's definitely it's definitely fermented, you know, to dry. But um, you know, it's, it's definitely got a fruitiness to it. That raspberry flavor. Again, as far as like uh, your traditional cab from California or just cab that has the, the green pepper uh, flavor aroma, it doesn't have that at all. Um, this is definitely a very fruit forward uh, cab. So I think it's a little more California-like because it actually is from California rather than an Argentinian uh, cab like the one before. But, um, you know, it. I, I definitely, I don't think I would confuse this for necessarily Napa and it doesn't say Napa on it so they, they could have gotten some of the grapes from Napa and some of the grapes from somewhere else they just didn't have enough to call it Napa but um, let's see if there's anything on the back of the label blah 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 da, da, da. Jacob's signature on the bottle blah 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 there's really nothing here it's just I thought I'd talk a little bit about history starting the winery in 1876. But, um, you know, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's a $6 bottle of wine, you know, six, $7 bottle of wine. Um, and, and, and it really seems like that's, that's the, the right price point for it. Um, if I had to choose between this and the Norton Barrel Select, I probably would choose the Norton um, because it, it's not as fruity. Um, and if, whether I knew that it was from Argentina or not, it doesn't matter if I was just given two glasses and told which one do you like, not even being told where these wines are from or anything, I probably would pick that one. This one, it's not a bad wine at all. It's, it's, it, the quality's there. Um, it's a $6, $7 bottle of wine. I mean, we're not talking first growth here. But at the same time, it's it's raspberry, medium tannins maybe acids probably medium medium plus. Um, I don't get much else out of it, and it, you know it's not a bad wine. You know if you're looking for something inexpensive, and and uh, I don't use I don't do not like using the word cheap because cheap tends to be a negative um, description, even though it shouldn't be. It should be just it should be more of how much something costs, not the quality level, but for something that's inexpensive, uh, like this wine is, um, if you're looking for that, you, you know you're you know it's going to be made at least decently. It's Behringer. It's not a bad company. It's not a bad label. Um, but so yeah, if you need something that's you know if you're on a budget and you need something that's six bucks, seven bucks, or whatever, um, you know yeah, and, and you like that that definitely fruit forward style. You, uh, if, you if you dig raspberries. I'm not gonna say it's raspberries for days, but if you dig that type of 
the type of flavor profile, then this is definitely a wine for you. My personal taste, not gonna rush out and get into the bottle, but you know, as as anyone should realize when you are reviewing something, when you're giving your opinion about something, no matter what it is, uh, wine, movies, music, food, politics, we're not gonna get into that, but um, you know what? It's what you like is what's important and not everybody's necessarily gonna like everything. I mean, that's what makes people kind of cool. You know, there's they, they have uh, interest in other things. So, like I said, this is not a bad wine. It's not poorly made. It's not a faulted wine. There's nothing wrong with the wine. It's just, as far as a flavor profile, not my favorite. Um, but I'm not gonna, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like poo-poo it either if I was drinking it. Um, I w- I'd probably though be like, man, I wish I had something else. Um, but if this is all I had, I'd be like, okay, I'll make it work. And if you like that style, totally go for it because, you know, there's plenty of people that like it and, uh, you know, they should buy it. You know, there's, there's things that I like that some other people don't like at all. And they'd look at me like you're crazy. I mean, when I was in New Jersey, the three wines we bought where I, that I bought at dinner uh, and I, and, and as we progressed the three wines, each wine I thought was a better wine and everybody else at the table kind of thought each wine became worse. <laughs> so that is an absolute perfect example of somebody who was geeking out about wine, going into all the cool things about the wine and somebody kind of going, yeah, you know, this doesn't taste like wine that I normally have. I don't like it. Like, oh, damn it. <laughs> I guess I'll just drink it all. So, um, especially when you get to the Sauternes wine, it was like, Everyone said it tastes like medicine. I was like, no, it tastes pretty. I mean, I understood what they're getting at, but I said, have it with this dessert. It tastes beautiful. All right. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. So let's kind of talk about, again, the ep- the episode 300 coming up uh, April 28th. Uh, at Max's Wine Dive, 7 p.m. Central Time is the live broadcast. If you're going to be in the audience, Click the Eventbrite link below to get your ticket. Uh, seating is limited. I'm not sure how much seating there actually going to be. It's pretty much going to be standing room uh, in the back room that we're going to have. Um, but so registration is limited, <laughs> and um, uh, be there between 6:30 and 7 because we start broadcasting at 7, start the tasting at 7. Um, if you're going to watch online, there's not much going to happen before 7 o'clock. Other than have a countdown going down, um, going on. But um, if you're able to show up, hit the Eventbrite. If you're not going to be in the audience but want to watch it, I have the Justin TV uh, link below to my channel. Uh, you can also check it out on Facebook because both both um, links are on the event in Facebook. If you are my Facebook friend or were a Facebook friend as of, what, March, okay, or end of February, um, then you got an invite. So... If you don't remember that, go look at your events and you'll see that you were invited for that. So if you're able to watch online, click the you're going. Uh, if you're going to be in the audience, click that too, but register on Eventbrite and um, let's see what else is at Max's Wine Dive. Uh, you will pay, the registration itself is free. I'm not taking care of any money. I'm not, I'm not getting anything out of this. Um, I'm not paying maxes. Uh, you'll be paying maxes. It's 20 bucks. You'll get three half glasses of wine. I know, I know $7 a half glass, but you got to realize that wines you're going to be getting aren't these wines, not trying to disparage it, but any of the wines that you're looking at right here, they're not going to be $7 bottle retail wines that you're drinking. Um, so, cause you're getting half glasses out of the thing. So again, then they're not going to be like fifty dollars bottles either, okay? But they're going to be decent wines. They're going to be new wines to Max's and new wines to me. So uh, when I go in there, these will not be wines I've ever had before at Max's. Doesn't mean I couldn't have had them somewhere else, but you know we'll see. Uh, it's also going to be kind of a celebration of the new gig that I'm currently in because this is a two or three weeks into that into that training process. Um, so I'm in a fine dining establishment. Um, that's about all I, I ever say about my job, whatever, you know, whatever I work. But um, that's going to do it for today. Click the links above to frame me up. Click the links above, below for the wines or the information about the event. 
hit the uh, PayPal donate button, subscribe for $5 a month, or just give me any amount that you want and give me, I don't care, give me five bucks, or you can give me $500. If you give me $500, you're going to get like this mention. You, you'll, you'll, well, I can't give you much, but you'll, you'll at least be uh, very much praised <laughs> for uh, uh, helping support the show. A value for value model, right? Anyway, um, that's going to do it. Um, as always, thank you for coming by and we'll see everyone again next time.